big thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. Game backups, cheat engines, emulators, save data modding, and even running Linux. There are so many things you can do with a jailbroken PS4. And I want to show you some cool big things as to why you might want a modded PS4 of your own. Now, in making this video, I'm pretty much assuming the fact that I'll never be able to work with Sony in the future, so I would really appreciate a like. So this is my special edition Spider-Man themed PS4 Pro. And this PS4 is special because it's running an exploitable firmware version that lets me run a jailbreak on it. Now, this video is for those people who saw this and thought, oh, I didn't know you could even jailbreak a PS4. These are starting to become a little hard to hunt down nowadays, and this one was definitely not cheap, so I wanted to share it with you guys. But first, sponsor time. I need to pay for this PS4 somehow. NordVPN is a network tool that helps you encrypt and secure your online data. As someone who spends a lot of time on the internet, I found that people try to get into my personal accounts a lot. I don't, I don't have to lie. I mean, look at all these login attempts that happen on my Instagram. This happens all the time. NordVPN encrypts your online traffic and hides your IP address so that way absolutely nobody's able to see it or access any of your data, not even Nord themselves. Now, everyone knows the trick about being able to use NordVPN to make it look like you're in another country so you can access different shows and movies on Netflix, but did you know that this works on a bunch of other sites too? My favorite is Disney+, Plus, where if you switch your country to the UK, you have access to a bunch of more Fox shows that aren't available in the US. I never thought it to the day where I saw Family Guy on Disney+. Plus. They have over 5,000 servers across 60 different countries, apps from everything from iPhone, Android, Mac, Windows, all the next-gen consoles, and one account can be used for up to six devices. And right now, NordVPN is hooking you guys up with a fantastic deal. Go to nordvpn.com slash dammitjeff to get 73% off a two-year plan, plus an additional four months absolutely free. Click the link in my description to sign up today, and thanks to NordVPN for supporting the channel. Okay, so how do we actually jailbreak this thing? Well, unfortunately, it seems that the majority of people watching this won't be able to mod their own personal PS4 because Sony tends to be patching exploits almost constantly to make sure that jailbreaks don't happen. And that means you gotta be running a lower firmware version that had an exploit, but wasn't patched in time. In this case, the highest jailbreakable firmware right now is 7.55, which was released in August of 2020. So unless you have a PS4 that hasn't been updated or hooked up to the internet within a year, you're pretty much out of luck. But I do have an upcoming video where I show off what a modded Switch looks like, and that is something that a lot more people can do, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that video. Okay, but let's say you do happen to have a lower firmware PS4. What now? Well, jailbreaking is really straightforward, honestly, if you have the right firmware. So first and foremost, we do not connect to Sony servers in any way, shape, or form at all. Uh, I'll get to why later. A lot of people tend to set their own DNS settings as to block any redirects to Sony servers or websites. But for the most part, jailbreaking is done through running an exploit on the PS4's built-in browser. It's no coincidence that the PS5 doesn't have one anymore. Uh, they just realize it's far too much trouble to maintain it if people are just going to keep trying to break it and break it and break it. So just log on to any hosting site that hosts these payloads. And in terms of payloads, there's usually two big ones, Mira and Goldhen. Mira tends to have the best success rate, but Goldhen seems to be more stable and has features like rest mode. You pick which one you want and just let it do its thing. All these lines of code makes you feel like a real hacker, man, let me tell you. Now, it might fail a lot. <laughs> uh, sometimes it works on the first try, and sometimes it takes like three or four times to be successful. But eventually it will go through, and once you see this, you're done. Your system is officially jailbroken. Now, once you leave the browser, everything may look the same, but the main reason people jailbreak is because of this. If you go to your settings, you see a brand new option called debug settings. And these are a bunch of settings that developers usually have access to. Now, you could go and check out the options here, but the majority of your time is going to be spent here in the package installer, which just straight up lets you install whatever you want on your PS4. Uh, homebrew apps, modded update files, straight up full DLC and games. Like, if you happen to have a whole ass rip of a PS4 game downloaded off the internet or something, not that I condone that, you know, own your games and everything first, you can just put that on an external drive, plug it into your PS4 and just install it. It'll run no problem. Here's me testing that with Sleeping Dogs. This is one of my favorite games back in the day. Uh, not many people talk about this game, and that kind of makes me sad. Alright, so now we have access to pretty much everything on your PS4. What now? Well, since now you can install whatever you want without any restrictions, I took a look at some homebrew applications that you can download. Here's a homebrew store that I installed. It's just an app that lets you see all the homebrew stuff that other people have made, like standalone emulators and cheat menus and stuff like that. Um, most notably is the media apps here. Since you need to be logged into PlayStation Network to actually use almost every streaming app on PS4, you can download these modified versions that bypasses that restriction. 
Now, obviously, you still need a subscription, but hey, no PSN. There's also RetroArch here that you can download, but you guys know how RetroArch works. You know, you know what it does. It's not that crazy. I mean, you can install this on a brand new Xbox today without having to jailbreak it. But hold on, because I'm going to show you something later in this video that you just straight up can't do on an Xbox. A quirk of a jailbroken PS4 is that, well, since we're not connecting to Sony servers, we can't update our game safely without risking updating our entire system, which would wipe the jailbreak. So there's an app called Patch Installer that just lets you grab any update version of any game so you can update or downgrade as you need. There's also PS4 Explorer, which is just a file explorer for your entire PS4. You can just look through all the files and copy paste whatever you need. Uh, and it lets you open an FTP connection so you can remote into your PS4 from a computer. Just drag and drop the files from wherever you need. And Orbis Toolbox, which just gives you a bunch of more information about your PS4. CPU fan speed, clock speed, memory speed, all that stuff. Uh, including a bunch of stuff about your games and applications and a bunch of other things. Okay, a big thing that I was really looking forward to was just playing around with some mod menus and cheats on this thing. So let's talk about that. So you can use a web browser to access literally hundreds of games that all have different cheats and mod menus and all types of stuff. It's really as simple as just clicking a switch and enabling it. One of the games I tried out was Uncharted and I spent like an hour just playing around with the developer menu in there. You can do things like enable demo mode, which just gives you unlimited ammo, god mode, stuff like that. Ever wanted to see what the game is doing in the background while it's loading? Check it out. I mean, I figured it was doing this, but uh, it's just really neat to be able to see this in real time. You can also fly it wherever you want, which is just neat to be able to see how the game works and how the developers design the levels and stuff. It's really neat. What does that mean? Well, I just, you know, happened to do a little digging of my own. Hey, check it out. That window over there is broken. Okay, let's see what we got. The disk version 1.0 of Last of Us Part 2 has a hidden developer menu built into the code, but it has to be enabled with a trainer. It looks very similar to the Uncharted menu, so I think they just use the same one for all of their games. Okay, spoiler, in case you haven't beat the game already, just, I'm going to talk about some big spoilers here, so just look away right now. So I used the trainer to look at out of bounds areas that I usually wasn't able to see, and it showed off some really interesting things that the designers make in order to make these levels. Okay. There's a free camera mode so you can look at any cutscenes from any perspective, and it really shows some neat tricks that developers use that you normally wouldn't be able to see. Ellie! Take out the driver! The cool thing about these cheats is that using a payload like WebRTE, you don't have to switch back and forth to enable cheats with the web browser in the game, back and forth, back and forth. You can just do it from your phone. So, for example, you load up ps4trainer.com, uh, you connect it to your PS4's IP, find the game, and just enable it, and off you go. Here's a million blood echoes on Bloodborne, right off your phone. Go level up your build as much as you want. The best part about these cheats is, and you're not going to believe this, uh, is that it all technically does save to a save data file. So what you can do is, take the save on your modded PS4, put it on a flash drive, plug it into your PS5, and it'll just work. It's completely broken. So for example, I load up infinite money and infinite skill points on God of War. The path home I plug in my flash drive and copy it over. Put it on my PS5. And look, a modded save running on my PS5. And theoretically, this could be done with any game that has a save file on it. All right, the next thing that I want to show you is really, really interesting. Now, you might have noticed there's some footage that I used that looked a little bit weird, and there's a reason for that. So some really talented people have made 60 FPS mods for a bunch of different games. Uh, the most notable ones are the games that have yet to have a PS5 patch. Now, for all those people that are just like, oh, you can't just switch up two lines of code in the game and just suddenly have 60 FPS. Uh... I got bad news for you guys. <laughs> I, that, that's literally all you have to do. I'm oversimplifying here, but basically you take these two lines, uh, find the lines in a hex editor that you have to replace, copy and paste the new code, save it as an update file, and install it to your game. And you're done. So games like Uncharted 4, which I really wish had a PS5 patch already, uh, can run at an unlocked frame rate, albeit at a lower resolution, say 900p. 
Now, it doesn't always hit a consistent 60 FPS, but there's no reason a PS5 wouldn't be able to. Now, this was a big deal with me. I love Bloodborne. Uh, and I can't wait for the upcoming sequel. No, not that one. That one, yeah! Anyways, it just sucks because most Souls games are usually 60 FPS, except for Bloodborne. Well, using a patch made by this guy, we can get it running at a mostly smooth 60 FPS. Now, it's not the best way to play it. I mean, it's running at 720p, and this is on a PS4 Pro, but just getting a taste of what it's like to see Bloodborne run the way it was supposed to be played is just really neat, and I fell in love with the way it looked. But uh, what do you think? Do you prefer this look, even if it's unstable, or do you prefer a solid, consistent 30 frames? Either way, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to have both on a PS5. Anyways, I just thought this was interesting to see for myself because, you know, from the way that other people talk about it, I used to think there was this massive process and a bunch of coding needed to get it running at 60 frames for next-gen patch, but uh, I guess not. I mean, maybe there's some other reason they don't want to push out updates for these games. So let's talk emulation. The PS5 kind of dropped the ball on backwards compatibility, if I'm being honest. Uh, only PS4 and PS5 titles. That's it. And PS now barely counts in my opinion. PS4 was a little bit better at this. You could buy digital versions of the PS2 and PS1 classics, but the list is so small. I mean, there's only about 55 games for the PS2. But now we know for sure that, in some form or another, Sony does have a PS2 emulator somewhere. Well, using a program called PS2 FPKG, we can take any copy of a PS2 ROM and convert it into a PKG so you can run it using the PS4's built-in emulator. It even has support for things like multi-disc games, there's options for adding custom save data, upscale and widescreen settings, fast forward options, and even a way to bring key bindings to a PS Vita if you want to play this using remote play. Once you pick out all your options, you create the PKG file, load it on a flash drive, and just install it. I tested out a couple games here. Uh, first one I wanted to test out was Def Jam Fight for New York. Uh, if you didn't play this as a kid, uh, we can't be friends, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it runs 100% with zero issues at all, and it's crazy to think that this is all running on a PS4. Now, I'm not gonna lie, compatibility is all over the place. It can range from some games running perfectly to some having graphical error to, or just having a low frame rate, to some just straight up not running at all. But personally, I would have been okay with just having the option, but what do you think? Would you be okay with an open PS2 emulator, even if it meant that there's a chance that your favorite games might not work? Or would you prefer the way it is right now where only certain games can be purchased, but you can guarantee that the games are compatible? Now here's a big one. Using a payload, you can actually run full-fledged Linux on your PS4. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, oh, I've heard of this before, and yeah. Remember that one time Sony let you run Linux on PS3s until they just said, oh, never mind. Only issue is, and you're going to hate me for this, I could not for the life of me get it to work on my PS4. I tried for a week straight diagnosing everything. I went through different hard drives, kernels, distros, trying to figure it out, and it just, it would just not boot. Every time I would try to load into Linux, uh, this is what would happen. It's just very unstable, so I'm just going to borrow Modern Warfare's footage. His guides have been a big help with this video, so definitely go check out his channel if you're interested in modding PS4s. So, as far as what you can do with Linux, it's straight up a regular computer that you can do all the computer stuff with, but it can also run things like Dolphin, which has a Linux port that works alright on the PS4. You can also run Steam on Linux, which, yeah, native Linux ported games will work just fine, but using Steam Proton, you can run native Windows games no problem. And yes, you can even run Simu, which is a straight up Wii U emulator, so you can play Wii U games on your PS4. How's that for meta? <laughs> Now, in terms of performance, it seems for whatever reason, PS4 Pros somehow have worse performance than just stock PS4, so hopefully they get that fixed up soon. But this is a really neat feature, and while I wasn't able to try it out myself, I still wanted to show that it was at least possible. Okay, so a lot of you probably have some questions at this point, so let's go over a few of them. Will my account be banned for doing this? No. Since you're not connected to Sony's PlayStation Network, they technically don't care what you do on your own machine, as long as it's not on their servers. Can I still play online with a jailbroken PS4? No. You need the latest PS4 firmware to play online, which right now is 8.52. There's just no way around it. And people in the scene have no interest in making jailbreaks with PSN support anyway, so playing online with a jailbroken PS4 is likely never going to happen. Now, just because you can't connect to PSN doesn't mean you can't be connected to the internet. So, yes, you could still use the browser, you could still use remote play, you could still use Netflix and Hulu with the proper homebrew apps, etc., but you can't exactly hop on a COD match and play with your buddies. Okay, uh, 
Is there a jailbreak available for 8.52? No. The latest firmware that has a jailbreak is 7.55 at the time of this video. How long will it take for them to find a jailbreak for 8.52? It's hard to say. Last time, there was about a year gap in between the last jailbreak release and the current one. And the reason they're so rare is because Sony actively incentivizes developers to report any exploits that they might find on the system, only disclosing them to the public months after they've already been patched. That's because Sony has a bounty program that'll pay developers if they can find and report exploits, with some bounties paying as much as $50,000 per exploit. Now, Sony's paid bounties are public, so you can go see right now how much Sony is paying out. So ask yourself, if you were sitting on an exploit that nobody else knew about, would you release it to the public, have devs play around with it and let it get patched in like two days, all for it to be pointless? Or would you snitch and cash out that $15,000 bounty that Sony would give you? I think the choice is pretty clear here. Okay, is there any way to downgrade your PS4 to 7.55? No. Well, technically, yes. You do have to have backed up a lower firmware update on your PS4. How do you do that? Well, first you make a copy of your internal PS4 drive, usually using a SATA to USB adapter. Then you have to back up your S flash zero file, which is done by desoldering the Nord chip inside your PS4, then using an E4 flasher to apply power to the chip to dump the file. Oh, what's that? Oh, you already lost interest? Yeah, okay, let's move on. Is it worth it to buy a PS4 just to jailbreak it? Well, I'll pass that answer on to you guys. Now that you know what's possible with a jailbroken PS4, what with the emulators, modded games and cheat menus, native PS2 package support, running Linux, Steam games, etc. Do you feel like it's worth keeping a PS4 for this? Would you buy a separate PS4 just for tinkering or would you keep your old one without updating it in hopes of a new jailbreak? Let me know in the comments. I love reading your guys' responses. Leave a like on the video if you learned something or found this entertaining, and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss a modded Switch video. It's a very exciting topic. Check out some of my other videos here, and thanks for watching!